Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing both Intel and AMD's upcoming CPUs. AMD, of course, would be Zen. Specifically, news regarding its release date, and with Intel, we're going to be discussing the higher end lineup of Intel's processors, known as Broadwell E. So, I guess we might as well kick things off with AMD because it's first in the alphabet, the A at least. And the good news is they are reaffirming the release date of the Zen. So you may recall that there has been some rumours, speculation, guesswork that Zen may actually see a delay in its release from 2016 and it may slip into 2017. Now the reason behind this is multiple. One of them would be the process size that is being created on 14nm. And the second one would be Jim Keller. However, despite the early rumours of 14nm struggles with global foundries, and the fact that Jim Keller has now, um, of course, left AMD, AMD themselves are being rather confident that we will indeed be seeing the next generation of their processors be released next year. These are comments from AMD CFO Devinder Kumar. He says, and I quote, I think the key is getting through 2016 is to continue to stabilize the computing and graphics business. Commercial professional graphics embedded in even high-end desktops with the Zen core should all be from a margin standpoint. I'm very disciplined. Uh, I've been very disciplined from the standpoint and then obviously getting to 2017, 18, 19 time frame. Uh, we showed a long time ago that range of target models assumptions across the board from a gross margin and profit standpoint and I think that are pretty firm and we expect over the next three to five years we can execute with that. With execution on the graphic side of it, on the data business side and on the embedded and finally on the new business we expect on the semi custom side of the house. Semi custom is actually pretty interesting considering obviously some of their rumours are that they will be <coughs> providing the processors for Nintendo's NX, but obviously, as we all know, it's up in the air. That's not been confirmed. However, this is actually pretty good news. Um, these comments were made during the Raymond James Technology Investors Conference. So, adding to that, they are also planning to announce the AIM, the Zen tape out, and then they'll start sending customer sampling over the next several months. So Zen, and this once again is a quote from Davinda, Zen was a clean sheet design that started a few years ago. We are in the final stages of executing and you know the milestones you want to hear us talk about is Zen taping out, which should be over the next several months and then putting samples in the hands of our customers and then starting the first full year of revenue in 2017. By the way, we have this reuse approach for cores. You will see the Zen in high-end desktops first, then servers from our overall product standpoint. Finally, as a quick reminder before I let you all um, digest the information and we move swiftly on to Intel side of things, I've got to say I'm actually rather excited about Zen. There are a couple of reasons behind this. The first is that I think we need good competition in the marketplace. Second, I feel that Zen is going to do things how I would have liked AMD's previous generation processors and to be honest with you, Intel's processors. I say that not because Intel are doing bad, but it's all kind of like safe, you know, these very safe iterations. And Intel recently have been a very safe company, particularly when it comes to the mainstream desktops like the i5s, the i7s. We've been stuck on four cores, um, eight threads for God knows how long. Skylake was a pretty decent processor, but honestly, I think we're at the point now where we want a little more. Zen, we're going to be seeing a 40% increase per 40% uh, per improvement uh per instruction per, per clock, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, that that's pretty hefty. And obviously, as Zen it matures and we see Zen Plus cores, this is only going to improve. So, what about Intel's side of things, eh? 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 So naturally, we've discussed AMD, so Intel follow. Now, you might recall that Broadwell E has been heavily 
hinted at what the specifications are. We will go over some of those in just a moment. But according to Benchlife.info, Intel are going to be officially launching the Broadwell E lineup at Computex 2016, which is actually really cool. So that means in 2016, June specifically, we're going to see the introduction of such CPUs as the 10 core 20 thread i7 6950X. Now, these processors naturally are going to be on a 14nm process, which is really cool. And we're also going to see a rather large increase in number of cores. And rather interestingly, for overclockers, if you're an extreme overclocker, maybe if you're just slightly nudging, you won't really care about this. But, but the platform will have a configurable integrated memory controller. Essentially, this means you're going to be able to adjust the base clock if um, the reports from Benchlife are to be believed. This means you're going to be able to alter from 2133 megahertz or 24. 2400 megahertz which is completely different to dynamically overclocking once again if you are trying to get the absolute best performance from your system you know and you're really interested in extreme overclocking then that's going to be something rather cool for those who are just running stock it's probably not going to be too much of a, a big deal so there are four processors four that's right four I know, super exciting, right? Up from the usual free SKU, so we've got four now. The 6950X, which as I hinted at, has 10 cores, 20 threads. It's a bit of a monster. The base clock is only going to be 3 gigahertz, but can turbo up to 3.5. And has an integrated four-channel memory controller. And of course will support memory, as I've just hinted at, to 2400 megahertz. It's going to cost you a grand, 1,000 US dollars, or your regional equivalent, in other words, like a thousand pounds, let's face it. This one is cores and threads galore. I, I don't think you're going to really want this for the DirectX 12 titles, but this is going to be for those who are running a lot of virtual machines, or if you're doing a lot of 3D rendering. Essentially, it's where actual core count is more of a... A, a bonus than raw CPU clock speed raw, rather than raw frequency naturally one can take a guess how it's going to overclock so for the sake of argument for all we know and obviously I'm just pulling this out of my ass the processor may be overclockable to like 4.5 or even 5 gigahertz which brings us actually to the 6900k now the 6900k is going to be a pretty much like for like replacement for the 5930 so essentially we're still going to be seeing the same eight cores and 16 threads but the processor we're going to turbo up to 3.7 which with a 500 megahertz differential between the base clock so just 3.2 now considering that the 6950x the rumors are showing that it's going to have 25 megabytes of cache which is obviously 2.5 megabytes per core, this is going to have 20 megabytes for the same configuration of 25 of 2.5 megabytes per core. Same memory configuration, but quite a large cut in price, to be honest. It's going to go down to 650. The 6850K is going to have 6 cores, 12 threads, and as you can imagine, this is going to be the replacement for the sake of argument 5820K, same core, six, 6 cores, 12 threads, same uh, cache configuration, but just 15 megabytes, because obviously the, the uh, number of cores is dwindling. But the base clock is still reasonable. It's going to run at 3.6, but turbo is up to 3.8, so there's less of a turbo on the damn thing. But at $550, it's not that much difference between it and the 6900. Honestly, for 100 bucks. It's quite arguable that this is the worst value out of them when you consider that the 6800K is going to have the same number of cores, the same number of threads, same amount of cache. The difference is the pace clock is lower and the turbo is lower. So essentially you're running at 3.4 with turbos up to 3.6. It is a K. So I have a feeling and I'm purely basing this on just numbers obviously i'm not 
testing the unit. But I have a feeling that the 6950, which is 10 cores, is going to be like for the super duper high end rich dudes. The 6900 is going to be for the more affluent, or I don't need a no huge number of cores, the high end gamers. But those who want more cores, and those are just completely and utterly freaking sick and tired of the four cores, eight fucking threads, I'm sorry, of the Skylake lineup. I'm sorry, I'm raging of that. I, st I still think that's absolutely ridiculous, but still. Then maybe the 6800K would be a great m m uh, bargain for 450 US dollars or your original equivalent. It's kind of like the, it's expensive, but it's not so expensive that you've just had to sell a kidney to the average person. It's still really high up there and, you know, if you're gaming on like a 1080, but it's not bad. And by that point, hopefully DDR4 memory prices will have stabilized as well and all the other caveats that you can imagine. As an aside, it's going to be really interesting based on the timing of Skylake versus this. Because obviously if Skylake is released, let's say three months later that's gonna be an interesting scenario and we know that Intel have dealt with a lot of delays themselves honestly my feelings on the matter are that at this point 2016 is gonna be absolutely crazy if I had to give some speculation I have a feeling that if you're waiting for this June and let's say that we finally get confirmation that AMD are going to be releasing their CPUs, let's say, August, September time. You may be better to wait. On the other hand, if AMD are not going to, they're going to release in, let's say, November, December time. That's an awful long time to wait if you've got the upgrade itch. I mean, if you've got a fairly decent processor, let's say you've got something like uh, 4770K, something like that, fine. That's, that's absolutely okay. But if you've got something older, it's like something that's not really cutting the mustard anymore for the gaming side of things. Say for the sake of argument, an FX 4300, or maybe a low-end i3, or something like that. Yeah, especially with DirectX 12 and the next generation GPUs and the next generation of displays, I can see that that might be a really good reason to jump on Broadwell E. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.